Howdy my totally tubular gamers and guess what we're doing, we're doing another ranking video. We're back for another Nintendo ranking video and today's is going to be on the Pikmin series. Yes, the Pikmin series, the strategy, puzzle, game series that actually created by Shigeru Miyamoto, all by Nintendo. Over the years, Pikmin really has become a cult classic series, with most of the games focusing on directing a horde of plant-like creatures known as the Pikmin in order to collect items by destroying obstacles, avoiding hazards, and fighting crazy wildlife that are hazardous towards everybody. Over the years, people have fallen in love with these games for its strategic gameplay, its interesting setup, its really original premise, and just original concepts that it brings to the table, and its unique take on the strategy genre in general. There really is no other series like Pikmin in gaming. I mean, the closest is like Overlord, and that's really not even still like Pikmin. Despite not being one of Nintendo's top draws or even one of their best sellers, Pikmin has consistently stayed one of Nintendo's most popular series, just period. Like, it doesn't really matter what year it is, people are always going to be clamoring for more Pikmin or reminiscing about how great the old Pikmin games were. And just like the people I mentioned, I also am a mega Pikmin fan and could always go for some more Pikmin. I freaking love Pikmin. I have been playing Pikmin basically almost my whole life. It's one of my favorite game series ever. I got the original games back on the GameCube like when they came out. And I was super into it then and I'm just as into it now. Pikmin's always been there for me. Always could go for some more Pikmin. Over the years, there have been three mainline Pikmin games and a spin-off. Each one of the mainline games has actually gotten re-released. For this list, we're going to be looking at one version of each game, and I will not be including Pikmin Bloom, the mobile game. We'll be ranking these games based on the usual, how well do they hold up, are they fun to come back to, are they fun to play, etc, etc, etc. Let me know your favorite in the comments below, like, share, sub, all that great stuff. So what do I think is the weakest of the Pikmin games? Pretty obvious. The weakest of the Pikmin games is easily Hey Pikmin, a 2D action platformer released for the 3DS in 2017. Now if you couldn't tell from that basic description I just gave, Hey Pikmin is not like the main series at all. It is also the least favorite of the Pikmin series by most accounts due to it being so different from the main games. The plot at the very least is very similar to most Pikmin games. Olimar's flying in his ship, he crashes onto an unknown planet, and has to uh, get his ship back in working order, has the Pikmin join him and must collect something. In this case, it's known as the Sparklium. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, obviously the biggest change is the perspective. The game is now in a 2D perspective. There's also a lot more platforming, puzzle solving, and much less of any strategic elements on hand here. Some stuff is very similar to the main games. You still find Pikmin out in the world, you call them with the whistle, you can throw them all over the place and use them for some basic puzzles but the actual act of doing it is different. Since it is on the 3DS, you do have to use the touch screen. You touch anywhere on the touch screen to throw the Pikmin, and I really dislike it when games make you just hold the 3DS for hella long and touch the touch screen everywhere, but aside from that, there is actual platforming in this game. Olimar kind of has like a little jetpack, and he can use the pink Pikmin to fly as well, and you will have to do a fair amount of platforming in this game. Olimar is also incredibly slow in this game, like, jeez man, he moves really slow. Like in the old games, I thought it was a decent enough speed, but this game, he moves real slow. And then you also get to explore around these areas, go in the nooks and the crannies and try to uh, collect all the collectibles and find stuff, and that's really it for the gameplay. It is very basic and, and frankly, it, it's just boring. <laughs> And really, that's just my biggest issue with the game, is the game is relatively boring and benign and really just fails to engage the player, in my opinion. Like, none of these puzzles are even close to challenging. They all feel like they were made for elementary school students. Combined with the sluggish movement and relatively sluggish controls, like, this game's pacing is just shot, and then they want you to replay these levels over and over to find new stuff, like, no. This game is too boring for its own good and too just basic for anything else, and it's a really mediocre experience and I have no problem saying to absolutely skip this game. There is a reason this game was forgotten about pretty much from the moment it came out. Like barely anybody talked about it when it came out and even less people talk about it now and there's a good reason. Alright, so for number three we have a really good game. We have the original Pikmin that came out way back in 2001 on the GameCube. Obviously a ton of nostalgia, played this game back 15 plus years ago, but still have no problem coming back and playing it nowadays, as it is still a fantastic strategy game, and there are very few games like it. 
The plot of the game is pretty easy to understand. You play as Captain Olimar, this tiny little dude who's exploring the galaxy in his rocket ship, and he gets hit by an asteroid and lands on an unknown planet. Once he awakes on the unknown planet, his rocket ship is basically completely destroyed and he needs to find all 30 parts to the rocket ship in order to leave the planet. The planet, though, does not actually have any oxygen. However, Olimar's suit has 30 days worth of oxygen, so uh, he better get a move on to find all of his rocket ship parts to uh, leave. But he does gain assistance in the form of these small little creatures known as the Pikmin of the red, blue, and yellow variety. And that's the general gist of the game, is that you have to explore this big, uninhabitable planet with your Pikmin trying to find all your rocket ship parts. And you know, there's a lot of challenges and trials that lay ahead of you to get those rocket ship parts. First off, I want to say the setting and the atmosphere and general vibe of Pikmin is just fantastic. You really feel like you've gone to another world. It's really intoxicating. The music's great. The world, it, it's just really well done. And playing this game, it's actually pretty interesting and pretty different from just about every other strategy game. As Olimar, you command up to 100 Pikmin at once with your whistle and have them do a variety of different actions, whether it's killing things, destroying things, building things, or carrying things. You do have them do a ton of different actions in order for you to find those ship parts. Olimar can also throw them to get to hard to reach places, and he can move all of them around as one single unit as well. Like I mentioned earlier, you do have a time limit. You do only have 30 in-game days to find all the rocket ship parts, or else Olimar, he will die. And so while this does create some stress and a sense of urgency, it's not all that urgent, as there are a bunch of times where you can get multiple parts in a single day. And one reason you're able to do that is thanks to the game's incredibly intuitive and great level design. The level design in Pikmin is actually really well done, as it not only is really intuitive for the Pikmin and strategy games in general, but it really leads to some free-flowing design where it allows you to take different routes if you're replaying the game. And thanks to the game's 30 days and general urgency, hurry up kind of nature of it, it is very replayable. The original Pikmin is actually one of the most replayable games, not only on the GameCube, but in general, in my opinion, of course. But also because of the 30 days, the game isn't exactly that long either, and if you know what you're doing, you can really finish this game quick, like maybe an hour or two quick, like really fast. And I've finished it just about that fast because I freaking love this game. I've played through this game tons of times. Despite all the nostalgia and fond memories and all that, I still think the game is actually superb. Like, it's still expertly designed, it has an incredible world, it has some fantastic enemy design also, and it's just all around a great game that I have no problem saying needs to be checked out by, like, everyone. I think the second best of the Pikmin games is Pikmin 3, which is now also available on the Switch. Now, Pikmin 3 is a little bit different from Pikmin 1 and 2. It really tries to expand the formula of Pikmin 1 and 2, and it really utilized the Wii U's gamepad when it came out. However, nowadays, you, you don't need to play it on the Wii U. You can play it on the Switch, and you don't need the gamepad. The game still takes place on the mysterious planet, but you don't play as Olimar or Louie. You play as Alf, Brittany, and Charlie three Kopai who have come to this planet looking for food. You see on the Kopai homeworld, where all of them are from, uh, they're having a famine because they did not do any planning and a booming population. So they've gone to other planets looking for food, and this mysterious planet, well, it's got a lot of food, that's for sure. Edible food. And don't worry, they come across the other Pikmin characters, it's all well and good, but that's the general setup as you are dropped into these environments, and instead of looking for treasure or ship parts, you're looking for food, you're looking for fruit, you're looking for vegetables. It's pretty sick. The general gameplay, though, is pretty similar to the other two games. It really feels like it just builds on top of it. Now you have three playable characters, and you can have them all go do their own thing, allowing you to really strategize what you want to do in each day, and how you want to go across each challenge and trial and task, and that's really what a lot of the game is, is they throw a bunch of new stuff at you that weren't in the other Pikmin games, but they also give you new Pikmin to deal with these tasks. There are two new Pikmin in the game. We have the gray-colored rock Pikmin, which can destroy tough barriers and are immune to being crushed by heavy objects, effectively replacing the purple Pikmin. And we have the pink-colored winged Pikmin, which can attack airborne enemies, carry items through the air, and travel over the water. And naturally, with new Pikmin, they're able to create new puzzles and challenges for you to figure out, and I gotta say, when it comes to the levels in this game, I don't think they're as great as Pikmin 2's, but I think they are really solid enough, and the game does still have a fair amount of replayability. Where you can get the food in a different order, or sometimes you can even get it different ways, but it does have that replay factor that Pikmin 1 also really had. 
They also do bring the time limit back. It's nowhere near as strict as the first games. All you have to do to extend the time limit is just get more fruit. And as long as you're able to get a couple pieces of fruit every day, or even like one really every day, you will be more than fine. Trust me, you will be fine. It's not really any, it doesn't really add any pressure or give a sense of urgency or that hurry mentality. It's just kind of there to make sure you're not messing around, I guess. And obviously when it comes to the presentation, this game looks incredible. I thought it looked great on the Wii U. It was maybe the best looking Wii U game. And the game looks great on Switch. It looks great even nowadays. Like, the world looks great. The character models are nice. The frame rate's always good. I really love the presentation and the world of Pikmin 3. I think it is just as strong as 1 and 2. And it gives off great vibes. The game also offers a challenge mode similar to Pikmin 2, and this is where you'll find the real challenge of the game, as Pikmin 3 is pretty easy, especially if you played 1 and 2. And then the Switch version even adds some new challenges with Olimar, which is cool. The challenge mode was fun. There's also multiplayer, but I haven't really touched that. And all in all, I still think Pikmin 3 is a great game. I still think it's absolutely worth playing. It's the most readily available out of all these games since it is on the Switch. And I think that everyone should at least try it, especially if you have any fond memories of Pikmin 1 and 2. And this brings us to Pikmin 2. Now, Pikmin 2, I think, is a fantastic game by just about every measure and has gone on to be one of my favorite games of all time. I think Pikmin 2 really just gets everything right from the first game, improves on it, and it's just never been top since. The game takes place right after the first game. Olimar is able to return home, and he gets home to find out that the company he works for is in massive debt. But it turns out that a little souvenir he brought home from the planet is actually worth a ton of money. So the leader of the organization decides to send Olimar and his buddy Louie back to the planet to go find treasure. The setup of the game I think is just great. I love how the company is in like crazy debt and they need as much money as possible and so you just end up grabbing all these random trinkets all over the planet that is apparently worth money and a lot of the treasure air quotes is stuff that we use every day in our lives like Duracell batteries and spoons and forks and random shit. The game also totally doubles down on its world and setting and vibe that the first game created and like I just really adore it. I think it's fantastic. This game has an insane amount of charm and originality to it that is not present in most game series. Like it, it's great. It's actually just fantastic. And the gameplay really is the same story. They just absolutely doubled down on the gameplay from Pikmin 1 and improved it and expanded it. Now, the original Pikmin, I didn't really have like any issues with it. There wasn't anything glaring about it, to be honest. But this game really expands everything. Not only are there a ton of levels to explore, but they introduce the caves. Every level has caves. And these caves, what they really are, they're dungeons. You go through these dungeons exploring, collecting treasure, and trying not to get all your Pikmin killed, and they're actually randomly generated for the most part, so you can go back to these caves and get pretty different experiences, and it was like, this is on the GameCube. This is crazy. The level design that isn't randomly generated, the stuff that's actually made, is just as good as the first games, if not better. It really plays to the Pikmin's strength, and the way that everything is set up is really nice. And now you have Louie to join you also, so you can have two different parties of Pikmin doing things at once. And just from the fact that you can split up the two characters and their Pikmin, a bunch of new puzzles are created that involve both of them and tons of different Pikmin. Speaking of Pikmin, the three from the first game return, but now we have two new ones. The purple ones, which are really heavy and count for a bunch of Pikmin, and then we have the white ones, which can go through poison. These add another layer to the gameplay and make things even more unique. They also introduce a couple sprays to the game where you can spray your Pikmin to make them more powerful or spray enemies even. Again, adding more layers to the gameplay. And while you don't have a time limit in this game, there still is some pressure to make sure you get all your Pikmin back to the ship before the day ends or they will die. Another thing that Pikmin 2 has that 1 had but 3 doesn't really have is this game's actually hard. Like, this game will make you strategize, and there are some bosses in this game, particularly near the end of the game in the caves, that will just absolutely wipe the floor with you. Like, they will just completely demolish you and your Pikmin. And as a kid, there were a couple times where some of these bosses, like the water dude on the rollers, he just completely wiped out my entire squad, and I lost everything. Like, this game is not messing around, and I think that that added level of pressure really makes up for the lack of time limit, because 
there is definitely some pressure being applied here, especially in the caves with the bosses, and I, I really appreciate that, and it really makes the game even more replayable. It is just as replayable as the first and third game, even without the time limit, and this game is way longer than both of those. I mean, sure, you could probably beat it real quick if you just get the amount you need and then that's it, but I would really recommend going for every single treasure. I think you'll get absolutely everything out of this game by going for every single treasure, except maybe the weight. But it's, it's really good. And overall, Pikmin 2 is just a fantastic game. Like, I really can't express that enough. It's my favorite strategy game of all time. Not even close. It's my favorite strategy game of all time. It's one of my favorite games on the GameCube, probably in my top five. I have just an insane amount of memories with it. I share a lot of nostalgia with this game, with a lot of my friends who also love the game. Like, there's just really nothing bad you could say about Pikmin 2. Like, find someone who dislikes Pikmin 2. I dare you. I dare you. Even if it's not your favorite, it's what, Pikmin 1 or 3? Those are great games too. All three games are good, just not hey Pikmin. All three games are very consistent with their quality also. Pikmin is one of Nintendo's more consistent series. It's all good, and it's not totally forgotten. There's a game on the Switch, unlike F-Zero or some other Nintendo series. Again, not totally forgotten. It is underrated, and it is the fan favorite of Nintendo series, it seems. And, you know... I'm really waiting for Pikmin 4, where's it at? Hopefully it comes soon enough and uh, this list will be outdated, but more Pikmin please. It's always good. Let me know your favorite Pikmin in the comments. That's it for this video. Hope everyone has a great day. All that good stuff. See you later.